Kaboom! And welcome to the Signature Spell Bomb. Thank you for dropping by. This is Chad, and we are your Oathbreaker source. All decks on this channel are built for the Oathbreaker format. If you want to know more about Oathbreaker, please check out the links in the description, or visit the amazing community on Reddit for more information, including rules and bans. On today's episode of the Oath Breakdown, we'll be looking at a $20 deck tech. The cost of this deck includes shipping and the cost of our Planeswalker. Decks on this channel are built to be affordable, fun, and interactive for casual play. This is in order to help new players join our format. Today's deck is focused on an approximate power level of 6 on the table below. On the Oath Breakdown, we break down the deck and build it back up so you can see how the deck wins and how it was designed. Now let's get into it. Today's Oathbreaker deck is Watley's Got Back. It's a Watley the Sun's Heart deck with Winding Way as our signature spell. This is one of my personal favorite decks as it is kind of a training wheels deck you can hand off to new players who are interested in learning Oathbreaker. I also find it very fun to play. This deck does also have a low cost of entry into our format. Our Oathbreaker, Watley the Sun's Heart, is a 3 mana Oathbreaker that costs 2 and a Selesnia hybrid mana. Her static ability is each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power, and at minus three, you gain life equal to the greatest toughness among creatures you control. We are going to focus on capitalizing on Watley's static ability to power our army's overblown defensive abilities and use that same army to defend her. With her loyalty of 7, it will make it relatively hard for our opponents to remove her, so be careful about using her gain life ability. We don't want to make our opponent's job any easier. Our signature spell is Winding Way. Costs 1 in a green. It's a sorcery. It says choose creature or land. Reveal the top 4 cards of our library and put all cards of the chosen type revealed this way into our hand and the rest into our graveyard. We are running Winding Way because almost all of our threats are cheap and it's not uncommon for us to empty our hand building our board state. Also, this card can help us hunt for missing mana, rebuild after board wipe, or just dig a little bit deeper in the late game. There are other spells that could be run as a signature spell, but I have found this is the best and easiest option for a new player learning Oathbreaker. Now that we know what's in our command zone, what's our game plan? In my group, it was coined early that creatures with high toughness have big butts, as supported by the art of all spiders in Magic. This is a deck full of creatures with huge bottoms and little to no power, and because we are willing to run some jank, we will turn this defensive might into terrifying offensive power before most decks get off the ground. Our goal is to build up an army with high defense, play waddles, and overwhelm our opponent. Now, on to the breakdown. In our first section, we'll be running a few ramp cards to help us get what we need in Land Hose. Arboreal Granger is essentially a 3-3 in our deck with reach, and when we play it, we get to put a land from our hand onto the battlefield tapped. Oshira's Cultivator is a 3-3 in our deck effectively. For one green mana, we can pay Tuna Green, tap, and sacrifice her to search our library for basic land card and put it on the battlefield tapped and then shuffle our library. Humble Naturalist can be tapped for one mana of any color, and we can only spend that mana on creature spells. And finally in this section, Primal Druid. When it dies, we may search our library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle our library. Now remember, the defense on all of these creatures is the most important part to Waddles. Along with our signature spell, we are going to need a few other cards to help keep the deck going. In this section, we're going to get drawn in. Inquisitive Puppet is a 0-2 for 1 mana, that when it enters the battlefield we can scry 1. And if we're willing to exile Inquisitive Puppet, we can create a 1-1 one, one human creature token. This ability can be used to replace the puppet if in dire need. Bygone Bishop is a 2-3 flying creature that reads, When we cast a creature spell with converted mana cost of 3 or less, we investigate. A huge percentage of the 26 creatures in this deck will trigger Bygone Bishop's ability. Being able to spend that 2 mana to sacrifice one of the clues the bishop creates 
will help us continue to draw. Lead the Stampede for Tuna Green is a sorcery that lets us look at the top five cards of our library. We may reveal any number of creature cards from among them and put the revealed cards into our hand and we put the rest of the cards on the bottom of our library in any order. This is a backup. It is as good as our signature spell in most situations, even at a cost of one extra mana. Mentor of the Meek costs two and a white, and it's a 2-2 creature that reads, Whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under our control, we may pay one. If we do, we draw a card. This card will allow us an opportunity to draw a card off of almost every creature we play without that high of a cost. In our next section, we're going to look at some small creatures that only have their defense going from them in... Babies got back. Ornithropter is a free creature for us with flying that's a 0-2. Once Watley hits the board, it becomes a 2-2 with flying, which is an excellent boost. Phyrexian Walker is a 0 cost, a 0-3, no abilities. Uh, Tassel Dromedary is a 0-4 for 1 mana. Similarly, o Yoked Ox is also a 0-4 for 1 mana. Grizzled Leotau is a 1-5 for a green and a white. Mained Serval is a 1-4 with Vigilance for one and a white. And finally, Sporecap Spider is a 1-5 with Reach for two and a green. Now that we've gone through our little boys, let's look at some creatures with abilities and promise to do a little bit more in our deck in Booty and Brains. Ligonian Band Trailblazer costs 1 white and is a 0-4 with Heroic. Whenever we cast a spell that would target it, it'll get a 1-1 one, one counter. Lanwar Augur is a 0-3. If we sacrifice it, we can give target creature plus 3 plus 3 and it will gain trample until end of turn. We can only play that ability during our upkeep, so it's not much of a combat trick since we will be showing our hand. But being able to move its damage around does help us. Tireless Tribe for one white is a 1-1. One, one. We can discard a card from our hand, and we can pump it by plus 0, plus 4 until end of turn. In the right situation, we can dump our hand, and this one card can one-shot kill some of our opponents. Augur Elvec is a 1-3 with Shadow, which is one of the best forms of evasion. It also has Sacrifice Augur Elvec. We get 4 life, and we can play this ability only during our upkeep. In a pinch, that little bit of life gain can get us to the end. Crashing Drawbridge is a 0-4 defender, and the only defender in the deck. We can tap it to give creatures we control haste till end of turn. If we have to dump a large hand all at once, this can be very dangerous for our opponent, giving them all haste. Curious Pair, for one in a green, is a 1-3 creature. It also has Treats to Share for one green. We can play it as a sorcery, and we can create a food token using its adventure. Daxos, Blessed by Sun, costs two white mana, and he's a two and a star defense creature. His toughness is equal to our devotion to white, and whenever another creature we control enters the battlefield or dies, we gain one life. Nyx Fleece Ram, costs one and white, and is a zero five. At the beginning of our upkeep, we gain one life. And Sun Cleanser, for one and white, is a one four that gives us a little protection against very particular decks. When it enters the battlefield, we get to choose one of these abilities. Remove all counters from target creature. It can't have counters put on it for as long as Sun Cleanser remains on the battlefield. Or target opponent loses all counters. That player can't get counters for as long as Sun Cleanser remains on the battlefield. And the first ability can be used to defang large creatures in 1-1 counter strategy decks. And is also really good with keyword counters in the new set. And the second ability can actually help an opponent We can or hinder. We can hinder an opponent by removing experience counters from them, or we can help them by getting rid of poison counters if that's in our meta. Arden Veil Tactician costs 1 and 2 white. It's a 2 through flying. It also has an adventure spell. Dizzying Swoop can tap up to two target creatures. That's kind of a fun combat trick, and we can tap down things that either we don't want blocking us, or that we don't want attacking us. Arista of the Endless Web costs 2 and 2 green. It's a 3-5 spider with reach. Arista is great in this deck because whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, we get to create a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach. That is excellent value for us, getting more little defensive creatures essentially for free. This is really good if we find ourselves up against a spell slinger deck. Glory Bearers for 3 and a white 
is a human creature that is a 3-4. Whenever another creature we control attacks, it will get a defensive boost of plus 0 plus 1 until end of turn. This little boost will help to keep our creatures terrifying. In the next section, let's pump things up a little bit in Grow em Big. Carapace costs 1 green. It gives our creature plus 0 plus 2. It is an aura enchantment. And we can sacrifice it to regenerate the creature, giving us a little bit of protection. Conviction costs 1 and white. It's going to give the enchanted creature plus 1 plus 3. And if that creature dies, we can pay 1 right to return it to our hand, thus being able to move the defensive boost from creature to creature. Eland Umbra costs 1 and white and gives enchanted creature plus 0 plus 4. And this spell has Tome Armor, so when the enchanted creature would be destroyed, instead we remove all damage from it and destroy um, Eland Umbra instead. Continuing with the Umbras, we have Tree Folk Umbra. It costs 2 and a green. The enchanted creature gets plus 0, plus 2, and assigns its combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power, which is what our deck already wants to do anyway. This also has Tome Armor and will protect the creature it's enchanting. Conclave's Blessing costs 3 and a white. It has Convoke, so we can tap our creatures to play it a little bit cheaper if we need to. It enchants a creature, and the enchanted creature gets plus 2, plus 0, oh, and that enchanted creature gets plus 0, plus 2 for each other creature we control. So the bigger our board state, the more terrifying this enchantment is. It may almost be one of the most important cards in our deck in some games. Shape the Sands for 1 green says target creature gets plus 0, plus 5, and gains reach until end of turn. So many combat situations, this is like giving one of our unblocked attackers plus 5 power for 1 mana. This is a pretty amazing ability when looked at through that lens. Our last card in this section does this even better. Tower Defense for 1 in a green gives all the creatures we control plus 0, plus 5, and reach until end of turn. This is quite possibly our deck's version of Overrun. Finally, in our last section, let's look at some cards that will allow us to interact with our opponent's plans in Back That Shit Up. Autumn's Veil, for one green, says spells we control can't be countered by blue or black spells this turn, and creatures we control cannot be the target of blue or black spells this turn. This is a great way to get around some creature destroy spells, board wipes, and otherwise inconvenient nonsense our opponents may play on us. Wrapped in Vigor, for one in a green, will regenerate all the creatures we control, getting us around many board wipes. Light of Hope, for one or white, will allow us to gain life in a pinch, destroy an enchantment, which is probably what we'll use it for 90% of the time, or put a 1-1 one -one counter on one of our creatures. Return to Nature, for one in a green, will allow us to destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, or exile target card from a graveyard. These are all excellent for allowing us to interact with problematic things in our opponent's decks. Now that we have gone through all the cards in the deck, Let's have a gander of what makes it run in the mana base. We're running one land that taps for both of our colors. It enters play tapped, and we would gain one life, and that's Blossoming Sands. Evolving Wilds. Uh, we can tap to search for a basic land card and put it on the library tap. This can help us fix if we're having trouble getting one of our colors. Kalani Garden enters the battlefield tap and can tap for green mana, but it also gives us a free 0-1 plant. We'll take free creatures whenever we can get them. Selesnian Sanctuary enters the battlefield tapped. It can tap for both of our colors at the same time, but we do have to return a land to our hand when it enters the battlefield. We're also going to run 8 basic forests and 8 basic planes. Now that we've looked at all the cards in the deck, let's do a quick price check. Our deck prices are based on the best available prices on TCG Player at the time of the recording, including the cost of shipping, but not basic lands. The average deck cost for a Watley the Sun's Heart deck on oathbreaker.edhrec.com is $90.59. Our deck cost is going to be much lower at $18.45. If you want to see a breakdown of the deck's cost, there is going to be a link posted in the description. This deck was built with a budget of $20 in mind, so if you have the resources, here are some deck betterments improvements you might want to consider. Put in Beast of Worship. Since we're running a lot of creatures, we can capitalize on this draw often. And this is going to be better than Bygone Bishop, so we'll take it out. We're going to add Veil of Summer to better protect our creatures and to get some incidental draw. 
And to do so, we're going to take out Lead the Stampede. We're going to add at least one board wipe to the deck to help with our game plan in Wave of Reckoning. It's going to have each creature deal damage to itself equal to its power. With all of our creatures having big defenses and little power, they will survive this, so it's very situational in our favor. We're going to remove Tree Folk Umbra to add it. In order to better our draw throughout the course of the game, we're going to add Collective Unconscious. We get to draw a card for each creature we control. We often will end up with large board states. And we're going to take out Autumn's Veil. We're going to add Archetype of Endurance so that we can give all our creatures hex proof, thus protecting them from a lot of our opponent's shenanigans, and we'll remove Wrapped in Vigor to make this change. For a little bit of extra protection and allowing us to get more of our combat creatures through, we do suggest adding a Giver of Ruins, since it is a 2-2 in this deck, so it can benefit from Wadley's ability, and we'll take out Tireless Tribe. And finally, if there's one card you must add to the deck to make it really good, um, that you're going to spend any money on, please pick up Sadar Kondo of Jamura. For two, a green and a white, he's going to give pretty much every creature in the deck unblockable. In order to add him, we suggest taking out Glory Bearers. Now that we've gone through the betterments and improvements for the deck, here at the Signature Spell Bomb, we want to be your source for Oathbreaker content. You can help us out by telling us what we can do to better provide content for this community. As you most likely noticed, this video has an updated intro and end card. Please let us know what you think. Please also tell us what you like or hate about today's deck tech. It also helps us if you remember to like, share, and subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when the next Oath Breakdown video goes live. We do have merchandise. If you want to show your signature Spell Bomb Pride, check out our new Run with the Booster Pack merchandise based on our Arlen deck tech on the channel. Please see the link in the description. If you want hints to future content on the channel, or if you want to connect with us, please check out the social media thingies listed here. And if you want to support the channel directly, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash signature spell bomb. Again, a huge thank you to my viewers. I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. Thanks again, and I'm off to Oathbreak another deck. Mm -hmm.